call the meeting to order uh, today, Monday, September 28th, 4 p.m. And uh, of course, as always, we'll start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, the uh, first item, as always on the agenda, is Citizens Open Forum. So each speaker will be recognized once and be limited to five minutes. Presentation on any subject. If any speaker has not been heard at the conclusion of the 30-minute open forum, the chair may announce a continuance and they'll give you an opportunity to speak at the end of the meeting. So do we have anyone for today's Citizens Open Forum? When you come up, if you could please uh, state your name and address first. Yes, hello. My name is Pam Settle. My address is 439 Lakeview Drive. So I'm here today as a citizen of Oldsmar, but before I was a citizen, I was born at Tripler Army Hospital in Hawaii. My parents are both Army veterans. At the time, my mom couldn't be a whack and a mother at the same time, so she was released from the Army. But she and her brother were the first boy-girl twins to ever join the Army at the same time. And that family um, has ancestors who fought in the Revolutionary War. Uh, but my father has a different story. He's a first-generation American who joined the military service and then went to college to become the first and only college graduate in his family. <clears throat> but their story took an interesting turn, an unexpected turn, and that's that my mom was diagnosed with MS shortly after being discharged from the Army. Some 30 years later, she was granted a full-service disability. That turned my dad into a full-time caregiver, and our family learned personally what it's like for disabled veterans and their caregivers. Uh, but through it all, my dad became a very active advocate for disabled veterans and people with MS. And in fact, if you go to Publix, now they have family restrooms in all of their new stores because of my dad. I'm proud of that. Um, my mom was laid to rest at the Montevallo National Cemetery in Alabama, and to this day, my dad is still a volunteer with wreaths and flags, and he still wears his cap with immense pride. This story about my family has almost everything to do with who I am. Sorry. My mom would be proud of me because today I stand here as a candidate for Oldsmar City Council. I'm a qualified candidate for seat one, and I am here today to tell you that my genuine care and respect for the veterans of the city of Oldsmar and our active duty military is genuine. It's who I am. I bleed it. It's in my tears. Hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Sorry. So, I came here today because I want you all to know me and to come to know me over the next five months as somebody who wants to be a strong and passionate advocate for the needs of the veterans and active duty military in our community. I have been in public service for more than 25 years, 15 years here in Pinellas County, I'm fighting for families and being a part of the community. As a leader, I've been described as a rainmaker, a change agent, and a visionary leader who's creative. And I want to bring all of that to Oldsmar, and I want to be a part of the future of this community. I have a Facebook page, Pamela Settle, candidate for Oldsmar City Council. I invite you to please come and like that page. I'll be sharing uh, personal information about me all along the way. I welcome input and questions and feedback. I uh, will be announcing a very long list of elected officials who are endorsing my campaign, uh, officials that you know who are strong advocates for veterans. Um, they have worked with me over the past 15 years. They know who I am and what I can do. They know my character and they know I get things done. And so um, I'm just going to ask 
for you to give me your consideration. I would like to earn your vote, and I'd like to earn your endorsements for me to be uh, the next city council person for seat one. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate you sharing with us today. Um, is there anyone else that is here for Citizens Open Forum? All right, then we are going to move to the first of the agenda items. Uh, the first agenda item is approving the minutes uh, dated from July uh, 27th. Um, uh, have, um, have each of you had time to go over the minutes? Okay. Um, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes? Make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All three of us. Uh, we know on each of uh, the motions there's only three of us. It's going to be one of you that is making the motion. The second one's going to have to second it or we're going to have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The next item um, is to interview applicants for one regular member and one alternate member vacancy. And let's see. Those are the ones at the back here. Yeah, here we go. All right, so we have um, candidate John Mastro Markey. Is John here? Yeah. All right, you're here. Great. I just, let me. I just want to first see who all's here. And they've got Alex there, Alexander McDonald. Great. And uh, and then the third is uh, Dennis uh, Zafran, and he's yeah, so on the line. Right over the phone, sir. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. So um, uh, I'd like to go um, kind of in order the way that I I read those. Um, so uh, John is uh, lives here in Oldsmar, and um, uh, John, if you'd like to come up and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to be a part of the board. Oh yes, yeah. yeah, I'm a member of the uh, veteran VFW that uh, just started up a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> I uh, served in the uh, military in the. Uh, First Infantry Division and in, uh, Vietnam War, and uh, uh, my uh, pit and my civilian work is uh, doing con <clears throat> uh, general contracting. And uh, in the past, uh, the company I worked with, we uh, built the uh, Vietnam Memorial up in uh, Troy, New York. If, if you wanted to look online, you could see that. And uh, Okay. And uh, I'd be uh, willing to serve on this, and I have advice for it from my past experience. All right, I appreciate. It. Uh, gentlemen, do you have any questions for John? I do not. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, John. Okay. I appreciate it. Uh, the second uh, person is Alexander McDonald. So, right, I'll take off the mask for this part. Great. Right. So I'm Alexander McDonald. Um, I was in the Army from 2009 to 2017. I had two deployments to Afghanistan. Uh, I retired medically as a sergeant uh, from injuries I had uh, from my second deployment. Um, I applied for this board because looking at the demographics of Oldsmar um, and being a resident of Oldsmar since 2013, the demographics are shifting younger. And we're also having more and more veterans of younger age starting to come out. And I think it would be best if we started having some more representation, especially in our city governments and our local governments. So after talking with a couple friends that live in the area, I asked them, what do you think I should do? They said, look at your local boards. And that's exactly what I came here for. Um, the job that I did in the Army, I was an Army Signals Intelligence Analyst, uh, and I currently do data analytics at home. Um, so numbers are kind of easy for me as well. Uh, but outside of that, um, I'm here to serve the city. Okay, and, and I should have asked John this question also. The only question I have is, um, uh, 
you know, especially people that are still working, we meet, you know, four times, only four times a year, but it's at four o'clock in the afternoon. Is that something that is going to impede with work or anything like that? Uh, absolutely not. No, I kind of make my own hours right now. So awesome. Um, gentlemen, you have any other questions? No, not. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. And John, I didn't ask you, but I assume you're retired, so I assume coming to meetings on a regular basis, uh, you know, four times a year at four o'clock would not be an issue. No. Okay. Awesome. Um, all right. And then the uh, the last uh, uh, candidate that we have is uh, Dennis Zafran. Um, he is uh, joining us via the phone. And uh, Dennis, if you'd like to tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Sure, thank you for having me. I'm sorry I can't be there in person. It's feeling a little under the weather today, and I think it's allergies, but I just want to play it safe. Um, so I, I'm a Navy veteran. I've been out since uh, 2000. Um, in between, I went to law school, opened my own law firm here. Um, I see my family live in Oldsmar, but my law firm is right across the right across racetrack road on the West Chase side. Um, we do a lot of uh, various events for veterans. Uh, last year, we went to the Oldsmar Library and did a free World for Veterans event. Uh, this year, it's obviously having to be virtual, unfortunately. Uh, we had big plans for this year, like running a luncheon and things like that, but that's obviously falling apart because of the pandemic. So we're doing it virtually for the next two months, providing like free World for Veterans. Um, so we like to have a lot of community involvement, uh, both myself and my staff members in the firm, to try to aid in, you know, any veterans that come to us for assistance. Um, and providing help to Gold Star families as well. Uh, we always take care of our Purple Heart vets to get free wheels for veterans. So this is our logical next step to try to help members of our own community here in Oldsmar um, in some way, shape, or form to you know, get the veteran community involved, to get the politics side involved with the veteran side, to try to you know see what we can do to help. Um, and you know, being a veteran myself, it was really important to get out there and just be involved in the community as well. So. Um, that's pretty much it. Okay. Um, and uh, the obvious question I asked the other two gentlemen, you know, we only meet four times a year. We're a very small board, so it's really important to have, um, you know, members that are able to, to make our meetings. Um, I know you weren't able to make it today uh, 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 being under the weather, um, but I think you were up last month and weren't able to make it either. Was that correct? Yeah. So what would uh, last we've been just kind of like shut down because of COVID. So my right. wife is high risk, so that's kind of oh really I got you away from everything. I understand. So but yeah, normally it's not a problem me getting out of the office before a four o'clock meeting. I've been working from home in Oldsmar for the past seven months anyway. So gotcha. Okay. All right. Understood. All right, gentlemen. Any other questions? I have none. Okay. All right, and that was the uh, that was the three um, uh, applications. We have two positions to fill. We did fill our other position, and that gentleman is not here today, um, which is uh, kind of um, uh, troublesome. Um, we do have one regular um, slot to fill and one alternate. Uh, the difference between the board member and the alternate is if a, um, a board member is not present, then the alternate, uh, if we have a missing board member, then the alternate you know, votes in their place, obviously. Um, so gentlemen, we've got the three people to um, uh, that are, um, you know, applying for the board. Uh, any discussion? Um, how do we, each one seems qualified, how do we, how do we determine? Yeah, so, um, you know, basically, you know, when we've had, when we've been faced with, you know, this in the past, obviously, we take the, 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 what we feel is the most qualified. We've been kind of lucky in the past, it seems like we've had one to fill, and then we have uh, one that's applying. So, um, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, uh, I think what we, you know, what we could do um, is uh, when we voted before. I, I wish Frank was here too, so we could, uh, so we had Frank's input also, but he's not here today. Um, and I mean, is it better for our candidates if we 
um, do it by a, a closed vote to you, or should we be voting, you know, um, you know, uh, how are some of the other boards do it or whatever when people are present? I just didn't. So, well, remember. usually there isn't a closed vote. There's okay. simply a, a motion and a second and then a vote. Okay. So. All right. Okay. The, uh, while we were still deciding, I was, I was just looking over the applications, mm -hmm. and uh, it seemed that uh, Dennis actually submitted his application in October 8th of 2019. I mean, if we're looking for something as a tiebreaker, mm -hmm. uh, and then... Alexander put it in September 8th of 20, and um, John put it in of July of 20. So uh, as a personal pick, I mean, if I'm looking for a tiebreaker, unless somebody has an idea, I just put in order of application, who, who put it first? Uh, right, wrong, and different other suggestions, I'm up for it, but... I mean, each one being eminently qualified. Yeah, I mean, all, all three of them are, are absolutely, you know, in my estimation also would be great to have on the board. And, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, you're right. It's, it, it, it's kind of a difficult decision between three of them. It would be great to have somebody young on the board. We've got someone, you know, our VFW guy and, you know, and, and Dennis also has been, you know, here in the air for a while. And I definitely don't want to um, uh, uh, ding him for, um, not being here with his wife being high risk, I know how that goes extre extremely because my wife has been in the same condition um, where I, this is, I'm not getting out very often at all for that same reason. Yes, John. Uh, my, my interest is that uh, we didn't come up shorthanded and not have okay. a seat. Yeah. I'd be willing to yield to the two under consideration that uh, hopefully they will uh, possibly join our VFW. Wow. Hey, that sounds great. <laughs> I'm a lifetime member of the Oldsmar VFW. I recently joined a year ago. Oh, very good. You hear that, Dennis? That's his pitch. He's going to bow out if you join the VFW. Get the guy on the phone there and see what he says. <laughs> I don't know trouble hearing him. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Dennis, I said, uh, uh, John uh, uh, Master Marquis uh, is a member of the VFW here, and he, um, he said that really he joined because he wanted to make sure that um, – that uh, uh, you know we wouldn't be left short on the board, so he's willing to concede out and let you two guys, if you definitely want to be a good active member of the board. And by him bowing out, he'd like to also encourage you, if you're not already, to become a member of the Oldsmar VFW. Also, take that into consideration. There you go. <laughs> okay, uh, John, if you're officially, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, with, withdrawing, then that'll make that, you know, a, a, a much easier choice for us. We'll, um, I think um, with, uh, uh, you know, one of you guys have to make the motion, but if you're making the motion, like you said, of, of tenure, then if you wanted, you know, um, one of you all make the motion of who's going to be the regular board member versus the, um, uh, versus the alternate. Okay. Cheers. Who's All right, so um, that my motion. Yeah, that's your motion. So John's motion is um, for um, Alexander McDonald to be the board member and uh, Dennis to be our alternate. That's oh, fine. I second. You second that? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I see no issue with that. I think, you know, sometimes one of us is gone and alternate is always uh, really good to have. We have one of our other very good board members that's not here. So um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So congratulations, Alexander. You are um, have uh, been nominated to our board as a regular member. And Dennis, thank you very much. You are also part of the board as an alternate member. And again, an alternate member still comes to all meetings and uh, and just uh, votes when a uh, when a regular member is not present but still has all you know voice on the board and, and everything like that. So thank you. Great. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. And John, thank you. That was uh, that was pretty awesome. And if uh, and down the road, if we have another member that's not able to fill it, if this gentleman doesn't, you know, continue coming back, then, uh, well, you know. Congratulations to both of you. Uh, yeah. 
Thank you, and thank you what you do for the uh, VFW also. Alexander, take a seat. Can Alexander take a seat? Can he come up now? Thank you so much again, guys. Huh? Uh, oh, um, yeah. He should. Actually, yeah. Okay, yeah. uh, you're now so, a board member. Uh, Alexander, you're now a board member. If you want, you can sit uh, in Michael's seat right here, or you can come up and sit in Frank's seat. Oh, whatever. Hey, either, either place. I'll sit here for this meeting. I'll All right. feel Frank's next meeting. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Hopefully, if he's, if he's here, right? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Does he have all the paperwork in front of him? Uh, I've got an extra set, actually, because I printed one out. It was there? There you go. Um, thank you. Uh, oh, except for here, I can grab. Yeah, I'll just steal Frank's. There you go. Yeah, that makes sense. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Okay, the uh, next item um, is to uh, discuss the Veterans Day ceremony. Chip. All right, I'm going to pass this off to Bryn since you guys have been working together on that event. But um, the, the event will remain virtual as originally, well, as planned, I should say, as planned. Um, even though we moved into phase three, yeah. we just feel it's a, a, at this time, it's a better thing. Vulnerable populations, large gatherings, yeah. and it's already been started to be marketed as a virtual event. So, yeah. And you're going to talk through the logistics of the virtual, right? Bryn? Okay. Thanks, Bryn. I feel slightly uncomfortable with the microphone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so as Chip said, we are still planning on the virtual ceremony. Uh, we are planning on having it inside this room, utilizing the podium as sort of the speaking point. Um, we do not, however, have IT available for the Facebook Live. That's going to have to be done via our phone or an iPad, which is totally doable. Oh, okay. Don't worry, I'm not throwing that out there just because. Yeah. <laughs> it is very doable. Um, Are they just not available to do it for us? They don't, they don't have the connection uh, okay. from in there. So okay. we'll have to just do it from a phone. Okay. Um, and I have access to our Facebook page, so I'd be happy to make sure that I, and I have a tripod, so I'll just set it up and it'll be good to okay. go. All right. Um, you guys can do like a, you know, could you possibly do a, um, uh, you know, like kind of a test of it ahead of time, setting up where it would be to see how well it sounds and stuff like that? Would you be able to do that? Of course. Yeah. Um, I would be happy to do that at any point in time, Chip, and I will probably discuss the Yeah, and you wouldn't need us, just so if you guys could come in and test it, set up your tripod, just Absolutely. see how it sounds and just... You know, do it on your personal Facebook, just inviting each other or something like that, you know, just to just to see how well it comes through. I think that, that would pay big dividends if you wouldn't mind doing that. Of course. I mean, we certainly wouldn't want it to be the first time we're doing it in the middle of the ceremony and then it cuts out. That would right, be right. catastrophic. <laughs> um, so just to quickly go over kind of the layout of of the event, it's it's going to be very similar to what we typically do. Um, but we're going to kind of truncate it. So, um, John, I've got you as kind of the MC for the event, doing the welcome and introducing the mayor. Okay. The mayor will come up, um, do his welcome. If there are any dignitaries present, he will recognize them. Um, John, you will introduce and welcome Tom Trask for the invocation, presentation of colors, and the Pledge of Allegiance. Our anthemist, you will introduce as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you'll reintroduce the mayor for his mayoral message. The mayor will then introduce the keynote speaker. The keynote speaker will say his piece. The mayor will read the newly engraved names, and then he will retire the colors and make closing remarks. Perfect. So we'll only have one song. Um, Katie DeCarme has graciously uh, decided to join us this year, and we also have a vast color guard that will be coming for the ceremony as well. Okay, great. Have we had any luck on a keynote speaker yet? Um, no, I thought Frank had said that he had an idea for a, uh, a keynote speaker, but he's not here today and I hadn't heard from him. Um, had, had you? I literally 
straight up don't know anybody. Okay. I mean, I, I, uh, I did find somebody for the, uh, <clears throat> it's getting harder and harder uh, to find people that want to speak for free. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Yeah. I mean, not, yeah, you want to pay somebody, I can get a, I can get a ton of people. But uh, to come up there and, you know, even on a Veterans Day ceremony and you were in the military right. and uh, people know people, it's just like, wow, nobody, yeah. nobody wants to do it. Right. The, uh, I'll reach out to Jerry Custon and see if he has anybody that he knows because there, there may be less and less people that are able to do veteran ceremonies and maybe some of those, you know, some of the some of the speakers that normally you would get or that are tied up may not be because they may not be doing a virtual or anything at all. So I'll reach out to Jerry Custon and see if he um, uh, has um, has an idea of, uh, of somebody that that would be able to speak for us. The uh, the one that's actually a pretty good speaker uh, is the uh, the guy that's the commander of the VFW, the new VFW. Oh, oh yeah, D David uh, Bear. 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 Yes, yeah. he's uh, he's quite articulate. Oh, I, I've never heard him like. Well, you know, I mean, during the speech, meetings, I hear yeah. him come yeah, up yeah, there yeah. doing the meetings, and yeah. once once you can do a meeting, yeah, and you're up there in front of a crowd, as, as you know, with different organizations. <laughs> Once you get the, the base format done, it kind of flows and you could go there. And like I says, right. being a veteran, being in charge of VFW, as a matter of fact, he just got a new position. It, it raised them up because of the VFW's stance in Oldsmar and the membership. Uh, he's, I would think he would be a uh, either a good candidate or somebody who would, who would possibly know. Yeah, I'll reach out to Bear. I'll give Bear a call today. Okay. All right. Speaking yeah. of David Bear, that uh, was another question of whether or not we were having him speak on the on behalf of the VFW, or if we were going to have Kyle speak on behalf of the Yellow Ribbon Network. We had them for Memorial Day, I believe. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I, if if we wanted to have them, I may want to make sure I include them in the the script in the program. Yeah, and I'm sure they would. You know, if if we do or don't use them as a uh, as a guest uh, as the keynote speaker. I'm sure he'll want to talk about the VFW, but um, uh, um, do you want me to reach out to him or do you have their contact to reach out to him? I do not have his contact. Okay. Would you mind? Oh, uh, yeah, I've got it. Thank you. And and also, um, now on the yellow ribbon, who was that? I'm going to say oh, his last oh, name very same. terribly. Um, <laughs> Kyle Van Schoik. Van Schoik? Yeah, I don't even... Did they approach us to talk? Because I don't even know how we got them before. Because I didn't. I, I'm trying to remember. Or was it was it last year's Veterans Day? I I I wasn't here for last year's Veterans Day. Okay. So I. Well, unless they yeah, approach us, I don't think we reached out to them. So, um, and this isn't going to be like the outside thing. We're recruiting, and you know they're doing that kind of stuff. So, uh, we'll see if the VFW wants to to uh, you know to talk at the end. But other than that. I think the least amount of guest speakers and things that we're doing, it, it, you know, will be better since we're doing it indoors and we want to keep the number of people in this room as, as low as possible also. Yes. So, so we don't overcrowd this room. So, okay. Great. Anything, anything else? Obviously, you need the most important thing, a speaker from us. Is there anything else that you need um, from us? I don't believe so. I think you answered all my questions just now. All right. Awesome. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. And then when we get closer, you'll send like the send me the send us the script and the um, and I mean we're not. Uh, I guess we're not going to put out flyers, but maybe we're going to put stuff on Facebook or something and and uh, and and let everybody know that it's going to be virtual. You know, we're not going to invite anybody to come here. Anything like that, it's all going to be virtual on Correct. Facebook, right? Okay. Yes. Cool. And I will be happy to, as soon as I get the bio for the keynote speaker, mm -hmm. um, I would be happy to send out the script as it stands and make sure that you guys are comfortable with it and I can put it into play after that. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Uh, gentlemen, any other questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, the next item is approved placement of placard on the fallen soldier memorial.
who has information about this? What is this about? <laughs> you broke it. So at the uh, at the last city council meeting, um, one of the members of the community, Tony Gross, had approached the council regarding um, the Fallen Soldiers Memorial and placing a placard on the memorial that uh, Mark has with him right now. Um, I guess this goes back to July of 2013 when they initially had approached the Veterans Advisory Board regarding placing names on the uh, Fallen Memorial Soldier uh, statue. Um, council had requested that, and, and this was for the um, Gold Star Families Day, which was yesterday. Um, so what staff did is we temporarily fixed it to the uh, memorial, and then we removed it after their small presentation that they did with the families. And that's the, again, that's what you have with you right now. Um, the, the mayor had asked this to be brought to the Veterans Advisory Board because of its permanent status, mm -hmm. and would like to get direction from you before approving that. So, so right now, there are the two names on the front of the boot, um, and then where are these, and are these two that were just, um, uh, th these two individuals were left off, or, or, or what was the? No, they're actually uh, new, they're family members of residents of Florida. Who died in? Who, who died in combat. Wow. And okay. uh, they, they wouldn't do it with the front. As a matter of fact, the person that was going to do that and make those bronze plaques at no cost for the families was the guy that made the, uh, the excuse me, bad words. It was the gentleman who made the Purple Heart Memorial. Oh, I got you, yeah. Okay, and he said he will attach it. And if it's done with the dignity and design, it's supposed to be on the side and or the back, correct. Uh, the front of the memorial, if, if you see on yeah. page number six or whatever, uh, you have uh, the, under the boots are Frankie Gross, and then after the other one is yeah. uh, Hummelhoff or whatever. Hummelhoff, yeah. Okay, uh, the design was to put these, I believe, on the side, and possibly put, if there's other ones, put them on the side also, or put them on the back. The most plaques they believe that it would hold would possibly be eight that would fit nicely without having something look. Yeah, because the sides are longer. Yeah, having something look like, like this is really bad or this is tech. So yeah. it, it was done all with uh, with class and dignity. And uh, I guess the Gross family and the, um, who was the other family? Um, uh, well, the, there were slides. Don, Don and Michelle. Uh, they were the other, they were named on it, but like I said, there was three families that came up about their sons uh, being killed in action. And uh, well, there was three families, but there's only two being added or? Well, so what Tony Gross had said was that she'd like, they would like to see families who have been here for a while. So those families who had moved here mm -hmm. um, have been here for seven years and something like that. And she had hoped that every 10 years that, we, that new f names could be added. Well, you don't hope for names to get added, but that every 10 years, it, you know, look again to the community to see if there are people who had moved in and been here for a while. Uh, with members that they have lost in their family for those names to get added in the future. So that it would be looked at again, and this is 2020, it would get looked at again in 2030. Yeah, and these are, because I mean, you know, obviously uh, anyone that, you know, passes away, we wouldn't have enough room all over this thing, but this is this is for soldiers that have been killed in KIAs, combat, yeah. KIAs, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely, KIAs. Uh, of, of families of Oldsmar. Yep. Um, so, and you said that the people that made the plaque, they're the ones that are going to fix it on there? Yes. Okay, good. So they'll know, because, you know, obviously this is my son's ego project. So, you know, there's very special type of, uh, of glue that you have to use to put brass to brass so that it stays all these years, like the ones that are there that are still staying. So knowing that they are fixing it, then, because that was going to be my other question is, is it going to be a fix that it's going to stay on there? Uh, the gentleman, so awesome. from, gentleman from Carter Hills assured uh, 
city council or whoever was there that he knows how to do that. Awesome, awesome. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I, you know, really appreciate the mayor that, you know, hey, we are his veteran spark and eyes the mayor, but for him to send it to us to also to send back to him is, uh, you know, really in the spirit of, of the board, you know, that are under his purview. So I really appreciate that it does that. So do I have a motion that we uh, affix the, uh, uh, this placard permanently upon the memorial in our veterans park? Motion made. Second. All approved. Aye. Uh, Aye. So, and, uh, yeah, and, and, and I again noted that the, uh, that the mayor appreciates the work that we do on the board that he was coming down to us to actually have us officially uh, um, uh, approve it. So that's awesome. All right. Um, now the, the once a year um, uh, addition of uh, applicants for engraving on the Veterans Monument is the next item on the agenda. Um, you all should have all of the list of names here in front of you. And um, we go through here, see. Allison, or Paul Allison Jr., Pelican Drive, maybe. blanket for everybody at the end, right? Absolutely. Uh, I think if I remember correctly from a year ago. All right. So I don't see any issues with Paul Allison. We've got Ryan Bennett on Shore Drive, Air Force. Air Force. Michael Childress.
So on George Martin, it said Newport Ritchie, but then it was crossed out and it said Bay Lake Trail. So he does live here in Oldsmar? Uh, yes, he did. He just, he, he did live in Oldsmar and that was confirmed. Uh, we just, he, he put in the wrong address. He put his current address in. And so I got you, I got you. Yeah. But then you guys confirmed that he did live here in Oldsmar. Yes. So, okay, cool. No, he's a member of the Parks and Recreation Value Reward. This is the biggest list we've had in a while. Oof, that's hard to read. Characterization of service on the CD 214. Um, should Michael Smith? Um, I didn't get to him yet. Hold on just a second. Let me Had only put a year in. Which one? Got Moser, M O N S E R. John? Mm -hmm. Only put a year in. Uh -huh. Which I just ability. Just picked up the you know, same hospital that I got discharged out of. Five for general yeah. One year, four months. I don't. I beat him. <laughs> Is it one year, one week.
don't, but he's a member of the VFW also. I don't, but he's a member of the VFW also. And if it wasn't characterized as anything other than, you know. Yeah, I don't see, yeah. I mean, from the, from the DD kit, it just doesn't have the uh, part four on it. Yeah, I recognize the name from the VFW, it, 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 but, you know, and I, I know who he is. I, I think that's, even though it doesn't show it. On yeah, there. I thought there were two criteria we were supposed to look for. It was one, honorably discharged, and two, a resident for some period of time in the city of Old Town. Right. Yeah. He's just not seeing on Michael Smith. His, we're on the DD-214. It's clear it doesn't have the, the, the um, characterization, characterization of, uh, of discharge. Oh, no. It might, there's two different types, uh, two different uh, DD-214s, one that um, lists more information than the other, and I think this is the shorter form of it, but if I, if I remember, but I, I think with the VFW that we, they have to look at that, and they look at it even more stringently, and I know he's part of the VFW, so I, and I know, and I know Mike, okay. Michael, so um, I, uh, that was my thought as well because the VFW is very strict. Yeah, they're very strict, and I was that, that was the quartermaster back when he joined, and I know that we had to we checked that, and I know he is a member. So, I I would feel comfortable that he's definitely you know um, has a, the correct characterization. I was just saying that was the only discrepancy. Yeah, yeah. no good catch though. All right, big list. I do not see any issue personally with any of them, the one that we talked about. Um, you know, a couple minutes here. I just, can't, I just can't read this one. Yeah, I know, that one's a little difficult to read, but I uh, uh, kind of make everything out. Um, are you on the wall yet? No, I'm not, actually. You need to get your application in. <laughs> I think I, I remember being told about it last year at the event. Uh, and then forgot about it. So I was like, I'm, I'm still alive. And they're like, no, no, no it's just for veterans. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, oh. I had got my name on it back with my dad when, uh, years ago, he had put my name on it, but then I was still in the reserves. And so mine says, you know, so-and-so to so-and-so date, captain. But then I stayed in the reserves and got out as lieutenant colonel. And I was like, man, I wish dad would have waited and not done it. <laughs> We're trying to figure out if they can come up with, you know, filling in the letters so I can go over it with the correct information, I on. with the right ears and everything. <laughs> you good with all of them? Good. Okay. Uh, when you guys want to make a motion to accept all the applications? I so move. All right. Second. All right. Very good. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. Anyone opposed? Nope. All right. So all of these names, thank you for the work of getting, putting all these together for us all the time. And... All right. Uh, discussion on the patriotic shirts. Um, you know, because of COVID, everybody's been shut down. The place in Dunedin has, um, I don't know if they're now finally back open, but um, the place I was trying to work with in Dunedin has been, um, you know, uh, absent as far as uh, getting back to me or anything. I called, left messages and emails, and I did that, you know, kind of like a month ago. I don't know if they went belly up or if or, uh, but that was the place that, you know, had uh, I had talked to previously. We're not doing an outside event, so I don't think it's as critical, you know, for us to, um, you know, have something sooner. Um, but I'll start trying to reach out to them again. Um, I know that um, uh, that was... What, was it Frank? I thought somebody else was also looking at a different well, the, one. Or you the, did. The, the gentleman that we had on the board was with the VFW. Then yeah. he, he moved yeah. to Carolina or whatever. Yeah, he Perry. was going to look through the uh, website for the VFW. Yeah. Uh, Frank was going to check out the one for the DAV. Yeah. Uh, I submitted some stuff from local people. And um, I think you were going to check with people from Knights of Columbus. Or whatever. So, what well, was the Dunedin one that 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 uh, we had gotten some shirts for for the DFW? I was kind of 
follow along what what um what Carrie was, uh, but right. they've been kind of non-existent. So I'll, I'll go down that path again now that hopefully things are opening back up and the places that survived through COVID are going to be able to start. Yeah, like says, things, things are open up, so we can table it to our next meeting or yeah. sometime in the future. So yeah. or if we come up with things in between, is that something that we could do over email? Uh, similar to how the design of the memorial was completed? Yeah. We probably could. Just as a reminder, though, um, especially, especially you, Alex, that you can't email each other about yeah. an item. I would email you, you, and then you would send it to all of us. Email yeah. me. All right. So, yes, yeah, so I could send it, and then you guys could respond to me, and we could put something together. Okay. All right, good. So then I'll, 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 uh, I'll reach back out to them, and if not, try a different place. I think it would still be good to... See if we can get that going. Okay, so we, right now we'll just table it till a later date. Yeah, if you guys are good with that. Okay. All right. Need a motion? Uh, no, we don't oh, need a okay, motion. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, the the next couple of items here. Next item is presentation of the 2021 meeting schedule. Well, it would certainly be much fancier and impressive had I included it in the packet, but I forgot. Yeah, I was looking <laughs> to see where it's at. It's, so it's the fourth Monday of January, April, July, and September. That's January 25th, April 26th, July 26th, and September 27th of 2021 at 4 o'clock in here. And I will send out a, a better looking schedule. January 25th, April 26th, July 26th, and September 26th. Did I get that right? Seven. December 27, yeah, okay. All right, perfect. I guess in case anything comes up, we could adjust accordingly or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. yeah, like we've sometimes had to do in the past. Okay, all right. I'll wait till you send it out. I'm not writing all the numbers down. Okay, great. So appointing the chair and the vice chair for 2021. Um, I'd say we keep it the same. I, everything's been working really great. Uh, I you're, agree. You're a fantastic uh, uh, chairman. And uh, who's vice chair? Frank. 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 That'll he, teach him. Oh, I guess we can appoint him even if he's not here. I guess that's a that's a disadvantage of not being here. You, <laughs> you, you automatically get <laughs> you automatically get approved or whatever. So right. Uh, I make a motion that we just keep the board the same. I second it. Okay. That's pending your acceptance. <laughs> that, you know. That's fine. Okay. I think I'm perpetual chair. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, last item on the agenda. Vote on it. Oh, that's right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Should I say nay? For me? <laughs> you could. <laughs> you can reject a nomination, I believe. What's that? And and you should be able to reject a nomination. Yeah, you can. But yeah. anybody who volunteers for anything, you know, never rejects anything because no. that would just be in bad character. <laughs> um, uh, all right. Last item is board comments. I do. You want to start off with your yeah? I do. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I. Try to put this as gentle as I can. I'm very disappointed in the new memorial uh, that was placed. Uh, there was changes made. I mean, we have the one that was presented originally to the uh, gentleman who designs our, our, our other memorials that puts our names on the walls. Okay, and uh, let me back it up a little bit. Hopefully the names on the walls will be repointed and recolored prior to the, well, I guess we're going to have a virtual ceremony, but whenever uh, he does do it or whatever, they definitely need repointed. There's some names you cannot even read. It's terrible. Um, some of the changes that I see that from what we presented to what is actually now on the wall, <clears throat> some are good, some are bad, some I don't know who approved them. Uh, the very first item is the American Revolution, okay, as we presented, is now changed to the Revolutionary War. Okay. I don't remember making that change. Okay. I'm not being, I'm looking at it and everything else is war. 
I'm just more concerned about he's changing stuff without coming to us and getting approval or to the board or to the people on there. So that's the first thing. So I can live with him changing it. It probably makes more sense having it a revolutionary war than American Revolution. So because originally I think it was going to be the American Revolutionary War is what it was, but I, it, it ran really too I long. I almost remember I was trying to look through emails, but I I thought that that part we did agree to change to Revolutionary War. Okay. I, I, I kind of remember that. That's why I was looking to see. So that part I think we did. Okay, but it is redo. it is changed. It was just a change that I noticed from what we presented to to what was on there. Because I believe this was the final draft of what we had sent to the to the to the man. Uh, the other thing, which was a change, which really isn't bad, but nobody let us know. We didn't get the vote on it, or nobody brought it to us as, "Hey, I'm going to make this change." What do you guys think about it? Was the original design between men and women was an ampersand, and he changed it to "and." Not. Terribly bad, but once again, he's making changes that we didn't, quote, approve, or it didn't run by us. We're putting all the time, all the effort, all the design, everything in it. If he's going to have changes or the city's going to have changes or somebody else, you'd think that they would want to run it by the people who designed the memorial in the first place. Um, okay. Item number three is the lettering on this, okay, on our original is bold and it's deep set. On his, it's thin set, and it's not in bold. Okay, you can see very, very clearly between the two, the two memorials. Okay, the thing is having it, okay, being a thin set like that on that wall, on a high spot, it's facing east. Okay, so every year he's gonna have to come out there and repoint it because those letters are gonna fade because they're thin set and the top of the wall, okay? And if you look at the memorial that we have up there and all the other memorials, most of the top names on the walls that are facing east are faded. They're faded one or two, some even as much as three down that have to be repointed every day. And that's a problem with having a thin, a thin setting on the, the, the cutting into the wall or having a bold print. The bold print is actually much deeper the painter go in, it is, doesn't affect it as long. Okay. Okay. Uh, probably the, <laughs> out of all of them, it's, this is probably the worst that I've seen, is that the branch of service symbols are way out of proportion. You got things that are up there, probably nine, nine inches or better. They're gigantic. They look like pie plates up here. Okay. It's terrible. They were supposed to be, as originally designed, the same as what the um, Purple Heart Memorial is. I mean, we got really nice little ones and made out of ceramic on a Purple Heart Memorial, and it looks like we got plastic pipe pans on the other one. It's just, it's really, anybody can see that. I mean, you can see the difference on it. If you've been there, you look out at these pictures, okay? Uh, there has to be some way to change that to make that look better, to put, make the, make the plaque smaller, to put something decorative around it, something where we have to be able to meet with the guy to say, that's unacceptable. I mean, you go out there and that's the first thing you see and it's, it's almost glaring. In addition to that, the coloring is wrong on the plaques, okay? I don't know where he got the design from, from the Coast Guard and the Army one. But the coloring is wrong on it. Kind of looks like it's faded already. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I guess the last thing is, I, I was just wondering, you know, if he made the changes, you know, did the monument company send a rendering of the proposal of the changes prior to cutting the stone? And if he did, who signed off on it? It's just, I mean, I can't believe that somebody would actually sign off on this. We signed off on the original plans. When yeah, they said was they were... there a newer one? I'm looking, the last one that I see is May, from Alexis to Ann, 
on May 19th. Um, and that has actually the changes, actually the word and was removed and an ampersand was put in. And then it went back the other way. I'm not, I'm not. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying. I, the, I think, the end probably looks good. Okay. Yeah, it's probably fine, but but they had come to us and said, hey, we want to go from this to this. And you are looking at the most recent one. Um, and we actually changed it from Revolutionary War actually to American Revolution. So this, what this is is previous to the one that that we were sent on May 19th with the changes to this, but this is not what got implemented. And that's what's kind of weird. At least they have that. Global yeah, Europe, everything. Right? Everything else. Everything's right. I mean, I just highlighted. Yeah, it would just this, those two this, things. This. I mean, this is not. This is not a big deal. That's not a big deal, even though they're not what we approved. But if if that's accurate picture of what the colors do look like, and the other thing that you talked about, because it does look like it should be, you know, very bold in there. Even if all that is the case, you know, those colors. Definitely do not look. Well, I mean, if we correct. sent him that and he gave us this, it's like, dude. Yeah, I would. Yeah, we wouldn't have. The one on the bottom looks if, if wonderful. He said, had he sent us a proof, we'd have said, no, that that, that isn't going to work. I mean, the, the guy from Curlew Hill sent us a proof prior to the memorial. He came by, and I think I went into either your office or Lex's office, and we says, this is what we want. Make sure all the wording was right. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the things that we had to change on it, and I still remember on the Purple Heart Memorial, is there needed to be a comma on there where my wife actually picked that up? Okay, because it changes things around or whatever and went down there and kicked it back to him and prior to him uh, uh, sending it out to us to be installed, he, he had the engraver come out and he changed it. Um, I, I don't know what we can do about this. Um, I mean, last time there was a lot of controversy when he put the wrong names on the regular memorial wall. Okay. Uh, I mean, he has double names on one or two of them, and he has a misspelling name on at least one of the people's walls. <laughs> Use the same guy, man. It's like, really? I mean, sure, it's nice that he had the same stone that matches all the other walls. It's not right. Uh, they asked me because I was sitting on the board whenever they, whenever he made the mistakes on the walls and he was trying to throw Kathy under the bus. And I said, no. I said, it's unacceptable. And he says, well, what do you want me to do? And I says, take it down. Put another stone up or recut it. I don't care. You got insurance. Do it right. We're paying that kind of money. Do it right. I mean, would you accept that kind of work if he was doing work on a house? You know, no. Or your car? No. It's just... I, I personally have a problem with that. I'll show these two guys because right? you didn't look at it or whatever. Yeah. yeah so this is the difference between the two. So you see what I'm talking about or whatever. Okay. This is what we proposed, and this is what he sent us. I just took that picture the other day or whatever. Whenever Chip let us know that it was in there, um, these things are like probably at least nine inches big. Colors are wrong. Looks like a dinner plate. I'm serious. Yeah. Uh, drive by it. Take a look at it. It's just like, dude. I mean, well, they were supposed the, to be the like. The question this. becomes, what can be fixed? Can these be fixed? The emblems can be fixed? To what? To the way you want them? No. I mean, they're already cut. These are. Oh, these are cut in. They're, they're actually cut in. And these things you got from tap. Just on like the lettering, right? man. You go up and tap on it with your ring, it's plastic, or it seems plastic. These are ceramic. 
That's what I'm saying. Temple Hart Memorial. That's what I'm saying is that. Because the reason that he is there, what, embedded in there? Yes, he cut circles in there and then put it in there, and they're all loose anyway. The glue isn't sticking anymore. Oh, that was my question. So you can't really do that because these are smaller than these. The ones we wanted were the same as what's on the Purple Heart Memorial. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying, my question becomes, what fixes do we think we can? The only thing that I had is if you pull these off, put these in here, and put some decorative around it. Yeah, around here. it to make up for the, the whole size. Yeah. yeah but then so this one's like, smaller, it's going to be, yeah. It's going to need like a, something in there. But you can see, like I said, we have bold. They have there. He changed this to yeah. this, which isn't bad. That's okay. They changed the So, inside. I mean, this one you can live with. Yeah, this one I can live with, and I can live with that one. And now more you can live with. Instead of the ampersand, sign, we did that. The yeah. reason we did that is we changed this yeah, and for spacing, is, is or for spacing yeah. so that we could put men and yeah. women or whatever. And all he did is change the font sign. Yeah, so I mean, that we can live with, though. I can live with that, and I can live with that. So the, the third thing then for these. Yeah, well, you, first of all, like I said, this is the Army signal. Yeah, no, I got that. This is this. This is the Coast Guard. This is that. It's wrong. Yeah, the Coast Guard doesn't look the same at all. Yeah, so what we're saying is these need to be corrected. If possible. Yeah. Um, so I'm saying. I, I, I hate to see it. You know, I hate the one who say, hey, I'm hardcore. Get it out of here. Well, I mean, that, that becomes the question. Well, yeah, go. I, mean, I think it was. For a moment, she'll be right back. Okay. I mean, they are huge. What was on that? Do you guys know. saw it in person down there too, or no? I haven't seen it in person. I haven't seen it in person yet. So, in that photo, though, those are these are huge plates, though. I think it's coming up wrong. This is what he gave us. Design. So it comes down to John is is the the lettering. That was changed. Okay, we can live with. Yeah, I, yeah. I, and the emblems are problematic. Yeah, the emblems. Well, two of them are completely the wrong emblems. Yeah. I mean, completely wrong. So the question becomes: And can we get those fixed? Yeah, and then you know, I'm sure you could get the big ones, but they still look like pie pants. Yeah. Um. You know. Well, you wanted to come back in the in the um in the contract. Did it? You know. Uh, it obviously doesn't look like the picture, but was there anything, do you know in the contract for the bid if it if it gave details of the sizes of the disc or anything like that? No, I didn't. Did it go to that level of detail? Not that you have that answer right now, but if you could look into that for us and um, and just, you know, see what recourse that we potentially have. And, um, and, and you know, uh, you know, in, in in the future, I don't know if you know. Well, the, the even, only, even if they're the only ones. Well, uh, apparently the guy that did the did such a great job on the on the uh, other uh, on the uh, uh, Purple Heart Memorial, he bid on this one for some reason. Uh, they took a little bid. No, you're saying he didn't even bid, right? He didn't. Have a, he didn't do. The one who did the Purple Heart did not, he didn't, even, he did not turn a bid in. He didn't turn a bid in? He, like, did not, he actually sent the email and said he, uh, he doesn't want to do it. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's all. It's a shame. Um, I guess we had somebody to have to talk to trust to and see what our, our options are. Yeah, if we have Contact any the vendor. Yeah, for sure. talk to the vendor and, of course, maybe, you know, see if you can... You know, pull the contract and and then and talk to the only thing that attorney. I what other than being what we proposed was supposed to go in there. Yeah. Uh, the only thing we wanted to do it, it that I know we had for sure was the size was supposed to be similar to the purple heart. Right. Memorial. So it would be match the rest so of the match, park. You know. Yeah. And I know, like I said, I know, I know the stone we agreed to. The stone was going to be the same color as the stones that were up on the. Other part of the yeah. thing, so that that was fine. But, so, um, so if you could, you know, take it back and see what recourse we have. Yes, I appreciate it. Tom. I mean, I guess because we're not going to have a Veterans Day ceremony at the park or whatever, we got <clears throat> a little time to fix it. And, uh, Depending on what our recourse is. 
All right, thank you. Uh, any other <laughs> any other comment? Good. Sorry to get fired up about. No, 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 no. I, hey, but it's, you know, like I said, we're. I don't know. Like I said, it's. Well, I haven't even seen it in person, so I mean, you saw it in person, and just seeing it on there, it looked. I was looking at it thinking it was like a bad picture from your phone or whatever, but <laughs> if that's what it looks uh, no, like, then it's uh, that's <laughs> take a walk across the street, take a look at it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Chip was saying that it's not even, uh, you know, like the disc are not the same type of like ceramic, like the other ones. They're either. plastic. They're plastic. Or they're some type of, yeah. but, I mean, if you go up there when you go home, yeah. knock on the ones at the Purple Heart Memorial with your ring, Yeah. go over there and tap on that one. Yeah. You can tell the difference between ceramic and some high grade of Formica or something. Or whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, like I said, sorry I get no. almost emotionally involved in yeah, it. Yeah, no, like absolutely. I, said, I mean, it's going to be there forever. So and you, and it's, you not what we, it's definitely not what we envisioned. Yeah, you want something that's, you know, respect for the veterans and everybody else coming up, maybe people going up says, who did that? You know, it's uh, yeah. cool. And I guess the other part that I had on there, uh, is that when he does put the names on the wall, if he could finish the one wall, I mean, he put two rows and then there's a blank yeah. row, then there's another row. It's like, dude, who does that? You know, uh, finish the one wall. I mean, we got 13, name, or 13 names. Yeah. I'm sure he's going to have to start on another one, but at least finish the one he, he started. And I think that, that somebody, now I don't know, Somebody with the city was supposed to get with Curlew Hills, and they were going to tell him how to clean the walls that are that are up there with the names on them because it looks like water has infiltrated them or it got in there. He says you can't just use like a Bonami or a little acid cleaner or something like that. You got have to use something to clean the walls because. If you look at the walls, I guess over the years, water come down, rain, hits the dirt, splashes up on them. Okay. The bottom half of the walls are all dirty. Okay. But it's just from from the rain hitting it, the water hitting it or whatever. And he said there's a way that they should all be sealed or whatever. There's a way to clean it and seal it. Because when he was putting a Purple Heart Memorial, as a matter of fact, the guys who were putting in says, Oh, you should do this or this or this to the walls because as many headstones as they have at Curlew Hills and other cemeteries, you would think that they don't want anything that looks pretty ratty. So uh, maybe somebody can get with him or the guy at Curlew Hills and say, okay, how do we do this? How do we clean the walls so they look presentable so they don't have stains on them? Cool. I'm done. All right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, man. It's no, no. Hey, these. You know, um, I'm glad that you brought those those items up. I appreciate it, gentlemen. Do you have any board comments? I did want to say I appreciate um, you guys voting and putting me on the board. Uh, I look forward to serving with you guys here. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome to the board. Appreciate it. Um, I don't have uh, um, any board comments myself, and uh, so hearing no other board comments. Um, Hopefully we can find out what happened to, hopefully Frank's doing okay. We'll reach out to him. And uh, so do I hear a motion to adjourn? adjourn? All right, second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Good. Motion adjourned at. Aye.